Our next main stage presentation is all about inclusion and equity in computer science, one of my favorite topics. And I'm very happy to welcome to the stage one of the STEM learning ecosystem's most incredible champions and a person whose life and work is all about STEM and inclusion. Can we throw those slides back up there? All about STEM and inclusion and equity. Paula Golden of the Broadcom Foundation. Woo! The Broadcom Foundation is our major presenting sponsor for this convening. They are the ones who are making all of this possible in, in addition to all of the other folks. And in addition to the Broadcom Foundation's general financial contributions, they've also been true thought partners helping advise us all, connect us with others, and advocate for us, and generally looking out for the welfare of this whole initiative. So thank you, Paula, for all of the work that you do and continue to do. Joining our dear friend and champion, Paula Golden, is another good friend, Matt Richardson, who until July 1st, so like, I don't know, 10 more days or something, serves as the director of the Raspberry Pi Foundation in North America. Matt is now trans transitioning to a new role at Raspberry Pi Limited, the head of community. Matt and Paula, I'm going to turn things over to you to help us understand how Raspberry Pi can play a role in the future of all of our ecosystems. Matt, it is. This? Whatever you want to do. I'll use this. I, if y'all notice, I'm still picking the bugs out of my tea. <laughs> that was fun. That was a good lesson uh, to all of us about getting out of your comfort zone. And I just want to give a shout out to Reginald and his remarks about Juneteenth. Um, having two grandchildren, yeah, yeah. Uh, having two grandchildren of color, of course, it's a special day for my family. But it also, I think, is really important to understand its roots. And one of the things that Reginald didn't really touch too deeply on is that the last people to learn that they were free learned it two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. Now, why is that so? I mean, we can talk about all the socio and economic reasons. But quite frankly, the reason I want to comment on is they didn't have Broadcom chips back then. And, and so you couldn't just send it over in a text or an Instagram. So um, we're very lucky, actually, for all people, uh, young women and certainly youth of color, both of whom need to build up the STEM workforce in our great country. Um, have the tools that they have. And one of our great tasks is to figure out how to wisely use those tools to close the digital divide. So I'm going to share with you a direction. Um, and in fact, Louis, you and I will talk during cocktail hour um, that Broadcom is going. Many of you know that we have for many years been national sponsors of the Broadcom Masters, which stands for Math, Applied Science, Technology, and Engineering for Rising Stars. We actually have decided to bring our money closer to ground. We are, we are, not, uh, we are a, a legacy foundation. We don't have the vast wealth of our company. Oh, we wish. But um, we are going to be developing a new program I'm telling you about today because it, has been, it will be focused on the uh, science fairs in the ecosystems. And we're going to build out a program that we hope will also coordinate very closely with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, who will be our new and very enduring partner at a much deeper level. Matt and I have worked together since he was just a, what did we used to call you, a proselytizer? What were you, an apost apostle? An evangelist, yes. For, and then he, he evolved into running the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation of North America. But we're about to embark on a really exciting new partnership. We're telling you about that uh, today. So, am I on? I just pushed start. Where's the pictures, guys? Okay. All right. So that's, you know, we're about to tell you about how we view coding. And I want you to know that as a lawyer, when I used to teach law school, I would say code, law school, if you're there because you want to be a lawyer, leave my class. If you're there because you care about the environment or you want to improve labor conditions or you want to advance anything, education, or you want to go into a political life, stay in my class, because lawyering is merely plumbing. You are moving a problem from A to B, then on to C, and down to D, and out the, out the other end. That is what coding is. It's why it resonates for me, 
as a non-STEM person who didn't get challenged in middle school and became a lawyer. But I understand the relationship between coding and lawyering because they are a process, a skill, and a language. And that's all they are. There's no mystery here. So let us begin. Broadcom is taking a turn where we're going to not only partner with Raspberry Pi, but we want to be thought leaders for the 17 sustainable goals of the United Nations. Why? Because they embrace everything all of us want our kids to ultimately do, be part of, and solve with the challenges that face them in the brave new world that they are being handed. We don't need to talk too much about that. We know uh, the depths, the darkness that that young woman just spoke of, our chief science officer who spoke to really dark times, and we do need to be the light. And one of the ways we're gonna get there is to take into consideration the challenges and try to coordinate around them as a body, as a world. So with that in mind, um, these are the goals of the Broadcom Foundation. I can't really see the slides so well, so I'm kind of at a disadvantage here. But these are our, these are our key emphasis. And these kids actually were part of one of our early coding programs with the Computer History Museum um, in uh, Silicon Valley, where we would take after school kids and teach them not only coding, but logic. Because really at the basis of coding for all of us STEM nerds is math and basic thinking about spatial and um, uh, spatial thinking and its relationship to numbers. So with that in mind, with those principles in mind, this is how we're going about our plans. At the center of everything is a STEM ecosystem. Around that will be a relationship with 50 science fairs. Louis, just so you don't get discouraged, we will have what I'm describing as also a major prize at the national level. So we're staying connected with Science Fair in a very big way because we see it as an essential community resource. And really, I call it kind of the, uh, if you will, the uh, village green of STEM in a community where you can gather and celebrate projects that kids do, bring teachers together, have reasons to get after school kids involved. We're also working very closely with Broadcom to get more computers in the hands of kids in order to develop our programs with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The specific one will be Code Clubs. We're gonna talk about that in depth when Matt gets up here. We also, um, and this is a leadership decision we made which is a little bit outside the comfort zone of a nonprofit. But we are funding a fellow at OSTP, one of a number of fellows who are being funded by nonprofits, our partners at Angen, um, they're all being partnered through STEM Next Fellows program. And our goal is to be talking about how to get more resources from all the various agencies down to you folks. There is a ton of money up there in uh, our federal government. And one of the problems we have in getting it to you is coordination. Now, Jan Morrison has been uh, one of the leaders and her whole team in making sure that this happens, but we want to be uh, in the president's ear and the ear of his wife, who we all know is a great teacher and educator. So, uh, with all of that in mind, I think I'm showing you, is that Tim Cook's quote? He basically says, if he were 10 years old and he was doing it all over again, he would have coding as a language. And I happen to agree with this. And there's some fundamental reasons why Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, the company which, by the way, has Broadcom chips in it. I can tell you that now. We used to have to lie about that when Steve Jobs was on the planet. And we were just that. They were our friends in Cupertino. Now we can say this because they were outed by Financial Times. So this, quite frankly, Oh, slide have I got up there now? Oh, yeah. The reason why it's important what Tim Cook... Oh, I can see down there. It's not big. Hey, can you guys make it bigger down there? I can't see it too much. But anyway, you say so. It's not there. Technology, what can I say? Anyway, the, the reason why this is important that we think about this, I think it's been set out by uh, this incredible man, 
uh, Mr. Doctor, I guess he is, Dora, who, had James Dora, who has given $1.1 billion to Stanford University to create a sustainability, a school of, thank you, now I can see what I'm doing, um, a school of sustainability. He believes, and I think this is exactly right, that this is the future computer science. Why? Because every kid on the planet wants to make the world a better place. They don't know how. They're going to get there with science and engineering that will create the technology that will give us a sustainable planet. The connection, connecting the dots between these things is critical in everything we do in STEM. I'm not here to say coding is the be all end all. I'm here to say it's a very important tool and language for every kid on the planet and one which will make the United States uh, remain as a leader in, tech, in technology and the economy of the world. Now, what is the beauty of it? Anybody can do it. Like I say, it's not rocket science. It's coding. It's easy. And if you look at the Scratch platform developed by MIT, it's a no-brainer. Anybody can do it. It's super fun. And Scratch programs are used by some of the most sophisticated science fair kids around. Um, it creates economic opportunity. It's obvious. When you look at somebody's resume at the bottom now, it doesn't just have French, Spanish, German as the languages. It says Python, Java, et cetera, and so forth. So you know it's the language of the future, and it's on people's resume. And it makes a big difference for kids of color, girls, people who are not yet in the queue for these jobs to have l the language of coding on their resumes. Make no mistake about it. It is the hiring edge. And lastly, it does create flexibility. We all know that, those of us who code. So with all this in mind, and to enhance what we think are the important uh, goals of, of developing a language and a skill for every kid, uh, we've joined forces with our friends. And we're going to share with you very quickly why. I believe this brings, got the sound up. Here it goes. Got sound? We got sound. Broadcom is a technology company. Roughly 99% of all internet traffic crosses a Broadcom chip. We have opportunities to create a workforce like none other on the planet, here, right in our backyard. Broadcom created the Broadcom Foundation to help make that possible. They understood how to connect our technology company to a cause, and that cause was to help create more engineers and innovators right here in their hometowns. Not only do we share a passion for kids, but we understand how to inspire them, motivate them, and more importantly, empower them to be the best that they can be and to see who they can be. Because if you can't see it, you can't be it. We are about to unleash an infrastructure package that includes broadband for the nation. It's every bit as important as back to the 50s when the Eisenhower administration created the national highway system. When you take on that kind of infrastructure challenge in technology, it means that every kid will have access to the internet. Am I excited? You bet. In the old days, you could take a hammer to a phone or a toaster, pull them apart and see how the circuitry worked. And quite frankly, you don't do that today with your smartphone. But if you have a Raspberry Pi, you can learn all the same things about circuitry, just in the way it's designed. And you can use it to do all the things that your computer can do. One of the new projects that we're working towards is called Broadcom. Coding with Commitment, where we're looking at the 17 sustainability goals of the United Nations and combining that with coding and computational thinkings so that kids can actually come up with solutions for community issues that concern them. The great thing about science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and the arts is that they allow you to be who you are and express yourself the way you want to be. So for us, watching a kid go on from one of the programs that we've been involved with, the science fairs that we support, 
all of them are going on to a place they deserve to be because they can see the road ahead. Whether it's clean water or air quality or health care or another issue they care about, they can use coding to solve a problem that matters to them. Not only will they learn about mathematics and computational thinking, but they'll be applying it to an area that they are concerned about, where they want to make the world a better place. That's our new logo. We're pretty excited about it. All right, so just very quickly, the Coding with Commitment program is being rolled out at science fairs in 50 science fairs, as I just said. Um, we're going to be talking about this and coding more extensively in a number of workshops. I'm also going to be leading a workshop on fundraising. And for those of you that are interested in that, I'm only bringing it up because I know it's high in everybody's list. How are you really going to uh, pull off some of the things that we dream about doing? So uh, I'm going to actually skip over these slides. These kind of tell how the program runs. Uh, my colleague got COVID, so she's not here to, to do this. And I think it's probably just better here that I bring up my buddy, Matt, and let him take the stage. Matt? Great. Uh, thank you, Paula. Thank you, the Broadcom Foundation, for all the support. We really appreciate it. Um, uh, my name is Matt Richardson from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, probably know us best uh, for these guys, uh, $35 computer, desktop environment with a web browser and everything you expect. You connect a keyboard, monitor, mouse, you boot it up, and you can use it like a computer or you can build stuff with it. And, um, but uh, something a lot of people don't know about us is that we're first and foremost a nonprofit, and our mission is to put the power of computing and digital making into the hands of people all over the world. Um, we got started uh, oh, just 10 years ago now. We shipped our first Raspberry Pi. And our founders, they what they were noticing was that um, young people who were applying to college programs for computer science didn't have the skills that they used to. They maybe could build a website, use some HTML, CSS, JavaScript, but they didn't understand truly what was happening under the hood, just like what uh, Paula showed with the telephone. Um, and so uh, Eben Upton uh, created the Raspberry Pi to encourage young people to be tinkering more with technology. Um, the ambitions were small. Um, they thought in you know, about a few years we'd sell maybe 10,000 units. Um, the funny thing about, about putting uh, numbers on slides is they get out of date. Um, we're actually, uh, we just shipped 45 million computers in just over 10 years, so it's a big accomplishment for us. They're not only used for education, they're used in industrial, commercial applications and everything. And so if you haven't seen a Raspberry Pi before, come find me at the adult recess. I'll be in the pavilion. You can play around with a Raspberry Pi. But there's a lot more that we do that goes beyond the computer. We train educators. We develop curriculum. We conduct research into computer science education so we can understand how most effectively for young people to learn computer science. Um, we, we provide young people the opportunity to engage meaningfully with technology, and uh, we celebrate and reward young people who, who create with technology. There's one thing that we want to focus on here, which is our informal network, our, our informal learning network, um, is how we support educators in informal environments. That could be after school program, library, community center, it could be a museum all these kinds of places, we support them using our uh, Code Club program. Code Club is just a global network of coding clubs run by volunteer educators uh, who uh, you know, teach young people age 9 to 13 computer science in a fun, engaging way. Um, there are uh, 13,000 clubs worldwide in 154 countries. Uh, and uh, our resources are translated into 28 spoken languages. So a truly global movement that we're uh, a part of here. Um, you don't need a Raspberry Pi to uh, participate in Code Club. Use whatever technology you have access to. If you've got access to something with a web browser, you can have a Code Club at your venue. 
here's what you do need. You need a facilitator, you need the venue, you can use our projects, or you can have young people explore other projects online. Of course, you need the children in your community, and then you've got a code club. Um, we provide resources in Scratch, Python, HTML, and CSS, and then we go way beyond with physical computing for the ones who want to tinker with technology, make circuits, build robots, that sort of thing. And there we go. Uh, and obviously, coding happens at a code club. There's also lots of collaboration, risk taking, problem solving, certainly lots of project based learning. And we're also uh, learning patience and, and expressing themselves creatively. Lots of young people are making projects that are meaningful to their cultural identity or are telling a story or are making a game for fun. So um, how do we help? What we provide, all the resources, the coding resources, the projects, the facilitator guides. Uh, we provide facilitator training. We have tons of competitions and challenges. Uh, graphics assets that you can use, posters, certificates, stickers, and badges, and certainly plenty of technical support as well. Um, if you want to find out more about everything the Raspberry Pi Foundation does, the first workshop tomorrow, we'll be going over all those things that we do. The second Raspberry Pi workshop, we're going to really focus on Code Club, and we're going to walk through a lot of the resources and try them out uh, tomorrow. So there's going to be two workshops on the schedule, in addition to uh, being available during, I'll be available during the adult recess with Raspberry Pi set up. If you're ready to start a Code Club, you can just go to codeclub.org and make it happen. Thank you.